I think we'll start this out with an example. You the filter chain is you're going to have a pass. Oh, you're grabbed by the function. Oh, yeah, right. we might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're funny, but not always a pass. Yep, we're back, more extinction, and it's still cold, but it's getting brighter because the clouds are going away, so I'm squinting more. Um, we did change location, which is, well, kind of, a few feet, anyway. Um, actually, for those of you that don't know, this whole place that we're at here, we're not trespassing. We're on the part where the, we don't go where the signs say don't go trespassing, or no trespassing. We go around all the signs, um, so I think we're still okay, but we're at the old Kaiser aluminum plant, which... Um, yeah, this used to be hopping and all my friends, dads used to work here, moms used to work here and all sorts of stuff. So this is kind of like old school place for me to be. Uh, but uh, it's kind of dead now, which if you, I don't know, it's kind of sad. Anyway, uh, so let's uh, continue on with extinction now that we've got that whole sad part of my life out of the way. Ah, extinction. So what are the effects? What happens? How does it, uh, what can we do to make it more effective? So first things first, let's go back to what extinction is. Withholding reinforcement from... Yeah, there you go. Just withholding reinforcement for behavior. Um, so the idea then is that you're going to, you're, you're trying to get a behavior to decrease, right? <laughs> Don't forget, extinction doesn't necessarily immediately decrease the behavior. It makes it worse first, right? And then it comes down, so it goes whoop, and then drops down. This whoop part, that's an extinction burst, okay? So extinction bursts are kind of cool. They're kind of difficult to deal with, but they do tell you one thing. Um, and it's, it's not a guarantee that that this is, anyway, you'll understand. It usually tells you that you're doing it right. If you're withholding a behavior and suddenly, or if you're withholding a reinforcer and suddenly the behavior gets worse, you probably should take that as a clue that you're on the right track. Be patient and hang in there. Whatever you do, do not flip and give up during the extinction burst because now your behavior went whoop, way up here, right? And let's say you go, oh my God, I'm done with extinction. It's not working because the behavior's getting worse. And then you stop the, re the extinction. Now you're reinforcing at this level where it was down here before. So um, if you're thinking about magnitude, my screaming was here. I started, you put me on extinction. My screaming went up and then you stopped the extinction. Now my screaming is up there. So you just made it worse. So you do have to watch out for extinction those types of effects that's one of the pitfalls of extinction um let's see so um and the other thing that you know so then boom okay you get through the extinction burst behavior starts to come down first off the books and everything's going to show you that's this beautiful curve my hands even doing it Ooh, extinction burst Ooh, extinction procedure comes down here it's not like that it's more like this <laughs> okay the behavior goes everywhere but you look at the general patterns all right look at the general trends and then you'll start to see that it's actually working um, so, uh, so then you get to the bottom of the curve and I'm hemming and hawing because I'm kind of wanting to get into an issue here and I'm probably not going to get into it now. We'll save it for another video, but you run into, um, an extinction burst. Well, no kidding. Cause we already talked about extinction bursts. You run into spontaneous recovery. All right. So you've got the behavior extinguished. It's down to near zero and some time goes by and then all of a sudden the behavior goes boink and it, it bounces right back. Right? So it comes back. That's that, that's spontaneous recovery. Say the behavior returns under certain conditions. Um, again, I'm hemming it on because I don't really want to get into the other thing which is related to this, which is resurgence. So we'll come back to that during the differential reinforcement series. So I want you to remember something else though. Extinction works for classical conditioning and operant conditioning. I'm describing operant conditioning. Classical is a little different. That's where you break the connection between the CS and the US, right? By presenting the CS alone and never presenting the US. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's it. No more. Except you don't get extinction bursts and it looks a little differently. It's really hard not to say anything, but I'm not going to do it. All right, so that's enough. Spontaneous recovery, the behavior comes back. Um, some people think it's related to time. Some people think it's not. There's evidence to say sometimes the longer that you wait um, for, that, for that environment to pop up again, um, the bigger the spontaneous recovery will be. The point being that you just need to worry about spontaneous recovery. You need to re recognize that it's going to be there and it will, that behavior will come back. Uh, it's kind of like uh, babies, basically, not babies, it's kind of like testing if the, beha if, that, if the behavior that used to work still works, right? It's like, I've learned that this behavior is not going to get me anything anymore, but God, today I'm just going to test it. It's Friday, I should just test it and then just, just see if it's going to work for me. Throwback Thursday. <laughs> Stop with the throwback Thursday jokes. All right. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> it works. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, so what affects all this stuff? There's all sorts of things that, that make this really effective or less effective. So let's get into some of those things. First off, let's be absolutely clear. The more consistent you are, the better off this is gonna be. If you even once allow an extinguished behavior to start earning that reinforcer again, you're going to be in a situation of extreme um, intermittent reinforcement and it's not gonna be pretty for you. Be consistent, and I mean anyone and everyone that's involved with this person, this dog, this cat, this whatever you're trying to, whatever behavior you're trying to extinguish, whoever's involved in that, they better be on board with the extinction procedure before you start. Otherwise you're bound for failure. And why is that? Well, let's talk about resistance to extinction because behavior becomes resistant to extinction when it's on intermittent reinforcement. So we got all those schedules, right? The VIs, the VRs, the FIs, the FRs. Let's compare those four to a continuous reinforcement schedule. Every time a behavior engages in, produces reinforcer. That's continuous, every time, reinforcer, every time, reinforcer, every time, reinforcer. Put it on extinction, behavior goes away pretty quick. Put one of these on extinction. One of these four over here, where they don't get reinforced every time, especially the, uh, the variable ones. Imagine, the organism has not detected that they're on extinction yet. Behavior is going to persist. So it's going to be up here and it's going to be like, oh, you're on extinction. Okay. But you're still on extinction. Okay. <laughs> I'm still on extinction. Wait a minute. I haven't been reinforced. Oh, it's going away. No, we got to have our extinction burst first. <laughs> Partial reinforcement. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, I almost smacked into that. So, which is really punishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost was even punishing. I stepped away. Notice that one. Um, so the, uh, um, the partial reinforcement produces something called the PREE, pre partial reinforcement extinction effect. It makes extinction less efficient, right? When it's been partially reinforced. So make sure when you're being consistent with your extinction procedure that you're not creating a pre, a partial reinforcement extinction effect. Not a good idea, right? We can start to talk about all sorts of issues about how an organism detects their own extinction, so on and so forth, but we're not gonna. Let's just keep moving forward. So again, continuous reinforcement, easier to extinguish than partial reinforcement. Consistency in your application, make sure that you're more effective with your extinction procedure. That means anyone and everyone involved. Um, oh, <laughs> extinction produces aggression. <laughs> People get angry. I hope there's no one in there. <laughs> uh, anyway, so there is um, a lot of literature talking about one of the side effects of extinction. And one of those side effects is um, aggression, <laughs> violence. Even pigeons will do it. Um, a lot of non-human species will get aggressive when, when their behavior is put on extinction. Um, so be ready for that. Plan for that. Um, try to make sure that that uh, is something that, um, that you can deal with in the moment. All right. So you have to be cautious with it. Which leads me to another thing about being cautious with extinction. Please don't use it with behaviors that are rather extreme. Self-injurious behavior, not a good idea. Why? Because that extinction burst, boom! is really dangerous for the organism, for the person, right? So if I'm banging my head against a wall and you decide to put it on extinction, I don't know how you would do that, but let's say you figured out how to put my head banging on extinction, I'm gonna get more intense, okay, and bigger. Uh-huh, right, you get the idea. The other thing you gotta watch out for with extinction, this one's kind of funny, um, is, uh, let's see. Oh, imitation issues. So. <laughs> if you put a particular behavior, think of this in the classroom. Let's say you got a kid in the classroom doing this. Beep. <laughs> right? Just once in a while, kid randomly goes beep. And the teacher has learned that their behavior is maintaining that by telling the kid to stop or giving attention or something. Right? So the kid randomly goes beep. <laughs> then you put it on extinction. Now that extinction burst starts to happen. Beep, 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 beep. Well, um, maybe you're a really good teacher and you're, you're handling that extinction burst, but then all the other kids in the class go, this sounds kind of fun. Now everybody goes beep, 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 and it's like the teacher's gonna lose the plot, right? So you have to watch out for imitation of ex uh, behaviors that you're putting on extinction because those behaviors are gonna increase in frequency. So you have to watch out for that. You don't want other people to imitate it. And I'm using imitation in loose quotes here because true imitation is something we'll cover a separate video on and I'm just kind of using the colloquial ver version of it, maybe just copying or uh, is, is probably a better word than imitation. So um, let's see, what else? Partial reinforcement extinction effect, aggression, consistency, not using it when you have an extreme behavior. Um, hmm. Getting everybody on board, that's the consistency part. Partial reinforcement continues. I, there's probably more I could say about extinction. If you extinguish one behavior, you should. Oh! 
oh, the most basic and important piece of using extinction, right? So um, sometimes I'm a fool. This is an example. Um, so when you put in behavior on extinction, you're removing that source of reinforcement for that behavior, right? That's like a behavioral vacuum. <laughs> Something's going to suck, right? Um, What's going to suck? What's going to suck is what comes into play if you don't deal with it properly, right? So you, you have, you're putting this <laughs> behavior on extinction, but it's in a context. There's probably maybe a, a certain uh, motivating operation that's occurring. So maybe you should think about taking an appropriate behavior and putting it in its place, which is a great lead into the differential reinforcement series that's just coming up pretty soon. So, which is what it's all about. In fact, differential reinforcement really is extinguishing one response and reinforcing another. And uh, anyway, so I just totally ruined that video for you. Sorry, a um, little bit of foreshadowing. So, um, and res resurgence is kind of come into play there too. So um, again, there's some differences between extinction for classical and operant conditioning. I don't need to go over all those details, um, but I think across the board, we've done a pretty good job of covering the various issues that are relevant to extinction. So if you're going to use it, and it can be a very useful tool, be aware of the pitfalls, be aware of how to make it successful. And please, please don't make it your only tool. It tends to be an easy one to kind of talk about, but it's not necessarily always your most effective one. Behaviors do get worse, uh, and you get that side effect of aggression, which can be just brutal to deal with. So, um, Put it in your toolkit, but just make sure you're looking for other, maybe some other tools that are more effective um, at, at maintaining a particular behavior, getting the response you want. Again, I'm, I'm a big fan of DR procedures, so that's basically what I'm getting at. All right, I think it's time to get out of here before we get arrested, shot, or just murdered in general. I don't know. I don't want to be extinguished. Bye. That was a video on behavior analysis. If you like it, please share it. Please subscribe. Please donate. We'd like to eat. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs>